Adams Wass explains, quote, Communism and the Marxist utopia of a moneyless society where products were distributed rather than sold and bought, unquote. Zeitgeist's main source, Acharya S., promoted the founder of communism, Karl Marx, on her website. It no longer looks like this, but using archive software, you can see how her website looked in the years past. She quotes Karl Marx defaming religion, thus showing her support of Marx and communism. The Zeitgeist movement is Marxism. As noted before, regarding communism, which in practice was the outgrowth of some of Marx's ideas, it was never based on the planet's resources itself. It was just a social theory. Before, the Zeitgeist movement is Marxism. As noted before, regarding communism, which in practice was the outgrowth of some of Marx's ideas, it was never based on the planet's resources itself. It was just a social theory. Once we understand that the integrity of our personal existences are completely dependent on the integrity of everything else in our world, we have truly understood the meaning of unconditional love. For love is extensionality, and seeing everything as you and you as everything can have no conditionalities. For, in fact, we are all everything at once. These facts have been kept from the American people. The pro-king propaganda machine grinds inexorably on, and it is even reported that a serious proposal has been made to add some of King's writings as a new book in the Bible. The trouble with uh, Karl Marx is he never w worked out a method for mass housing or increasing the agricultural yield. And I, I don't know of anything but technology that can do that. Yeah. So if you have social ideas and you believe in, in developing better distribution of resources, all we want to know is how do you do that? I looked into communism and socialism, and I asked questions. How are you going to house the masses? How are you going to prevent, prevent corruption in government? Well, there you said, well, when that time comes, we'll work on it. I said, let's work on it now. I would help any country, any organization, communist, socialist, fascist, free enterprise, in finding better methods of doing things. I'm not against anyone. I just said that communism was great 50 years ago. Yeah. But today, it doesn't have uh, technology in use for managing the Earth's resources. And it, it, yeah. it really doesn't look into behaviorism like the Venus Project does. It still deals with police and stratification and military systems and political stratification. It, it doesn't have answers. It wishes and aspirations and doesn't have methodology of how to achieve it. It uses money and banks, and we don't right. have any of that. Oh, actually, it has armies and navies, and we don't have that. Actually, um, it does have um, the method of still using uh, money, and it does have the method of still using uh, manual labor. But um, actually, Karl Marx definitely uh, had a lot of um, uh, anti-thoughts uh, about uh, stratification, social stratification, and his envision for communism is not what it is today. Absolutely not. But well, he, that's he what I was saying. How are you going to prevent corruption? If you don't build that into your system, you won't be able to attain it. He had some wonderful ideas, but he did not have methods of preventing corruption. Yeah, absolutely. He was interested yeah. in the working classes. I'm not interested in the working class. I'm interested in getting rid of all monotonous and boring jobs. Yeah. So people are free to go back to school to study what they want to study. I suppose we could all just get upset, have no direction, run into the street, set things on fire, right? Like the idiots did at the G20 in Toronto. Granted, they were probably agents of provocateur, you know, but, uh, you know, to allow for more police restriction to enable certain things, but still, does that do anything? This is why traditional protest is now a total failure. 
the more violent an uprising, the more security, distance, and weapons will appear in the next protest. This is, again, the genius of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and the secret of nonviolent protest and peaceful public disobedience. Uh, I suppose we could all just get upset, have no direction, run into the street, set things on fire, right? Like the idiots did at the G20 in Toronto. Granted, they were probably agents of the provocateur, you know, but uh, you know, to allow for more police restriction to enable certain things, but still, does that do anything? This is why traditional protest is now a total failure. The more violent an uprising, the more security, distance, and weapons will appear in the next protest. This is, again, the genius of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and the secret of nonviolent protest and peaceful public disobedience. Passivity is this state where a person becomes addicted or compelled to pursue that which they cannot have. I'm going to say it again. Passivity is a psychological, emotional, physical, and spiritual state where the person is addicted more to not having than having. Another person said to me, uh, well, I believe but then, in the But then you use radio as a basis saying that, yes, we do have some sort of a democracy because you can flip the stations and you will hear but one it's all genre, the, you will hear talk radio, you will hear something else that's not all the same. It's all the general, it's all the same general, broad, I mean, perspective, you know? It's not like... Yeah, uh, yeah, because being advertised probably by the same people. I mean, I mean, you can call them different, but it, it, it all sort on of the falls whole, along the same. This system sings the American song. Mm. On the whole, there less, are a yeah. few stations. Where there's unemployment, protest signs, don't cut down the forest. As long as people buy lumber, they're going to keep cutting down the forest. The stupidity of walking around with protest signs doesn't work. The points out of the shortcomings of our country, but does not offer an alternative. The, the activists that, that are kind of the watchdog of what's going on here and always telling what's wrong, it's really verbal masturbation. Verbal masturbation. Verbal masturbation. To us, because they really don't pose an alternative to direct, direction. If, if we don't get out there another direction to work towards that, that could work for all of our benefits and talk to other people and show it, and work towards it in any any profession in any way that you can other people are going to do your thinking for you and that's called fascism so you know the the transition can happen in a lot of different ways we don't know who we will meet out there and the more you talk about it the more we might have access to people with funding who know that this system is full of shit and want to try something else so you know, that's all we can say is, is work toward it. If, if you don't work toward it, I can assure you nothing will happen. Creator of Zeitgeist, Peter Joseph, has wanted a world system or utopia paradise on Earth since the release of the first Zeitgeist film. And as far as the spiritual aspect of life, you know, we're all pure spirituality. Of course there's something outside of understanding because we're only, we're just a fragment inside this larger whole. I end Zeitgeist with a very positive note. We're talking about the, the consciousness, the whole consciousness, because you can scientifically orient yourself and, and even more importantly, spiritually orient, orient yourself into a collective consciousness to realize that we're all one organism. And the moment people stop dividing themselves up and generating religious division, political division. The moment they stop, people stop fighting amongst themselves is the moment paradise will dawn. When a person says, I'm spiritual, I say, you mean you have no locks on the door and you invite hungry people to live in your home, you feed them? Oh, no, nothing like that. So I really don't know what people are talking about because I said before, our language designed hundreds of years ago. We just subject to interpretation. Ladies and gentlemen, the purpose of this program is far greater than to prove to you the immorality and subversion of this man called King. I want you to start to think for yourselves. I want you to consider this. What are the forces and motivation behind the controlled media's active promotion of King? 
What does it tell you about our politicians when you see them almost without exception falling all over themselves to honor King as a national hero? What does it tell you about our society when any public criticism of this moral leper and communist functionary is considered grounds for impeachment or dismissal? You need to think. You desperately need to wake up.